here. I've got this box underneath my desk. It's a big box. And uh, whilst I'm working on projects, any kind of papers that are left over, I just chuck into this box. Um, I've also been having a sort out and some more got added to it as well. Some leftover bits and pieces. And I want to make some clusters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort through all of this and I'm going to sort it into, I've got a selection of bags and some cellophane bags and some plastic wallets. Still look like I'm in a mess don't I but actually <coughs> it's coming together quite nicely so um, I've got sort of different types of plain papers in here I've got corrugated card in that one I've got vellum and tissue paper sort of see-through stuff a few napkin bits in there I've got book pages music paper and ledger paper stuff in that one um, I've got at the moment I've just put all the plain stuff into one bag I've got I've got some more of them to add some little um, tiny rectangular pieces which are going to be ideal for putting some words on so I'm going to keep those in a separate bag um, this one's got tea, coffee and avocado dyed scraps this one has got all the incidental Corridarman type <laughs> scrappy strips. And then I've got this bag that's going to have my patterned papers in, but I'm going to split those into two separate piles, maybe three, and I'll come to that a bit later on. Okay, I'm almost there. Uh, I made a pile of patterned papers. And I'm just going to sort through these now because I want to split these into <coughs> slightly different categories. Um, I could split them into colour, but I'm going to split them into sizes. So I'm going to have large, medium and small. Um, so I'm just going to work my way through these now. Mm, strips, oh, they're a different kettle of fish altogether, aren't they? Okay, uh, the strips might have to go in the large. Um, I've also got some that were originally digital kits and I'm going to put those in the odds and sods bag um, because I can use the pictorials and, and text from off of those. So these are just purely um, decorative papers. So like this one was from a digital kit. So that one can go in the odds and sods. Um, shapes can go in the odds and sods. Okay, I've finished sorting out. Yay! Um, what I want to do now is I actually want to put a piece of card into each of the bags because when you've only got a few pieces in, these bags can be quite floppy and I want them to stand up uh, in my box so that I can sort of easily find them. And then I'm gonna label the piece of card as to what's inside. I put glassine, oh, come on pen work. Glassine. Well, um, napkins. Etc. That etc covers a multitude of sins, doesn't it? And again, with this one, this one's all floppy doppy. So I've written unusual papers on there because um, there's some wallpaper on there, there's some painter's tape paper. Um, what else have I got in there? Handmade paper, some Amazon packaging. And I've got them already in my box here so that you can see sort of what's what. So I'll just put these away and then I'll go through them. Okay, because I want to make a series of embellishments 
and I want to force myself to use these. I don't want to have to go to anywhere else in my scrap room. I want to use these papers up, okay, so that I can get rid of them. Because otherwise they just, I, you just end up building more and more and more scraps. So I've got my word strips, which were those little rectangular pieces. And I've got my corrugated card. I've got my glassine, vellum and napkins, etc. in there. I've got dyed papers, so I've got coffee dyed, the ones that I've inked with lace uh, and wallpaper, some purple in there, so there's all sorts in there. This is my odds and sods bag, um, so I've got a collection of scraps of fabric, some pre-printed stuff that um, I've either cut out and used and I've got bits left over, so I've got those. I've got my unusual papers which as I say is the likes of handmade paper, wallpaper, that sort of thing. This one I've got graph and ledger paper in there. This one's got, <laughs> I'm calling this my Corrie Darman pieces um, because we, we do tend to throw sort of bits like this away and I thought well you know I need to have a, a small collection of these. I don't want to have a big collection so that's why I want to use them up. I've got a uh, book and music paper in this one. This one I've got playing card. Now I could separate this down further and as I say I have got um, a storage thing hanging over the door and I've got a bag with cream card uh, and file folders, a bag with black card in, a bag with white card in and a bag with craft card in. As I say this was just purely from out of this box as I've been working the scraps have gone in there now I'll come to that one in a minute this one um, I ordered some paper and it came in this lovely envelope that I want to use but what I've put in there temporarily is um, again some full sheets of printed papers uh, that I was testing out um, so I can see about using some of those up and then this is my bag of patterned paper and as I said to you previously I've split it into three sections so I've got the big bits and the strips I've got the medium sized pieces and I've got the small pieces so I'm putting those two and I don't need to label those up I think I think even I can work out what those are I've put them all in one bag Some for now. People might think that I'm OCD. And it's not that I'm OCD at all, but I do like to be organised. And with any kind of crafting, and especially with embellishments, if you're organised and you've got this stuff sort of prepared and ready, then you can go straight to it rather than having to rummage through all your stash and your bits and pieces. Now I'm going to go on to the next part now that I'm also going to do some prep work before I actually start to make my clusters because again it falls into that category of if I'm organised and I've got several pieces ready then it means that I can make half a dozen or I can make 20 or I can make 50 you know however many I need um, but if I do this prep work beforehand it's going to make the job a lot easier now, as I say, some of you might not like to do it this way. It's just the way in which I like to work. So I'm going to go off and go and get the next bit ready and I'll show you the next part of my prep work. Okay, I've got my next part kind of ready. Uh, I just want to go through them with you quickly as to what I've sorted out here. So I've got a selection of laces. Now I've got a big tub of uh, bits of laces, you know, sort of when I've come to the end, uh, of a big piece of lace and I've got just tiny little bits left that's what's in that tub and I don't want to have this big tub out because it takes up too much room and there's too much choice so I've narrowed it down and chosen just a few so I've got some bands of lace uh, and I just use those um, I forgot what you call them those little elastic bands that the loom band elastic bands but I want just bands of lace uh, with sort of not much of a, a decorative edge to them. So they're just a strip of lace. I've got um, coffee dyed 
laces so that if I want to do something slightly more vintage I've got a couple of those to hand. I like to have um, scalloped laces because I think that they look nice hanging off the bottom of something so I'm hoping you might be able to it's not a very good choice Carol that one let's pick that bit out so that it's got sort of a scalloped edge to it the same as this one this one's got a pretty scalloped edge to it um, so I have some of those and then I have some laces that I can cut out specific patterns from. So on this one it's uh, a length of pretty flowers and with this one, although it's a wide one, this one has got scalloped patterns on that I can cut out individually. So I've got that one out as well. So I've got those ready to hand and as I say I don't want to overwhelm myself with too much because sometimes too much choice makes it difficult to make a decision, especially if you're a Libran, like me. So I narrow it down to how many I want to have. The next thing I have is buttons. And I've, I, one, two, three, four, about four or five jars of buttons over there on my windowsill. Uh, big jars like this. So again, they're separated out to make it easier for recognition. So I can do pretty and delicates and I can do vintage and neutrals, all right? But I'm going to do um, some stitching with these. So one of the things that I like to do with buttons is I like to have some faux stitching in there. So it looks as though they've been stitched to the paper. So I've got a needle and some thread. This is just cotton thread, uh, linen thread. It can be embroidery thread, whatever you have. And... I'm just going to over sew and I'm going to leave a tail on this side. This is from the top of the button. And I'm just going to over sew through those two holes. Need that you might be able to see better then, eh? Over sew in those two holes a couple of times. And then come back through and knock the thread off. So thread it through the loop twice, pull in that knot and then I can just trim away some of the excess and it now looks as though that button has been stitched so that I can just glue it onto, I can just glue it onto my page and it looks as though I've, onto my cluster and it looks as though I've stitched it on the cluster. Um, and I like to have a selection of those ready. The next thing that I like to prepare is like little clusters of pictures. Um, and this is a new digital kit of mine. So as you can see, I've got them split into two sections here. That's because this section, the, the printer had run out of ink and I was printing it from, from another room and hadn't realized that the printer had run out of ink, but they're still usable. So I'm gonna still use these. And then these were the actual printed elements so I'll just lay a few out right way around my health carol there we go and I'm going to cover these with some wax pellets which I have shown before how to do these but these are all from little vintage cards so let's put some flowers on there too Oop, shoe, a couple of ladies okay, and then with my wax pellets I've got a silicone mat down for the heat and I've got some greaseproof paper which I use, I keep this and I use this for my waxing because it's already got bits of wax on it so I shouldn't need too much more so I should be able to get away with one or two pellets on each piece it just gives a different finish to um, to the pieces and then I've had my iron on it's on hot so this I will just be able to run over the top and not everyone likes the effect of the wax I think it's great so it's a bit lumpy bumpy to start with because obviously the wax pellets are under there but once it starts to melt And then I can lift this up, 
carefully. I want to get my fingers in the hot wax. Okay, I can see that they're all nicely covered. And so I'll just wait for those to cool a little and then lift them off. And uh, it gives them a really nice finish. So I'm just going to quickly go over it again and then I'll call those done and ready. There we go. So those are now done. Um, and then the other thing that I will do, let's move that out of the way. So I'm going to do this with some of the, the badly printed ones. Is I'm going to dip these in my Versa marking and then cover them with some embossing powder. Okay, so now I'm going to use my Versamark. And I'm just going to dab my image into the Versamark. Make sure that it's well covered. Move these out of the way a minute. Stick it on the bit of card or bit of paper. And I'm using um, some Paper Mania clear embossing powder. So I'm just going to cover that. Tip off the excess. I'm just going to move that over to the side for a moment. Heat tool. And then I've got a nice shiny little image there. And I can double dip it if I wanted to um, and add another layer of powder on top of that.